Doctrine and Covenants 79 and 80 were received on behalf of Jared Carter and Stephen Burnett within five days of one another in Hiram, Ohio. And both revelations contain the Lord's will to these men regarding their preaching of the gospel. Let's start with the backstory to section 79. Jared Carter was 30 years old when section 79 was received. He grew up in Benson, Vermont, and then moved to Chenango, New York, following his marriage to Lydia Ames. It was while living in Chenango in January 1831 that John Peck shared the Book of Mormon with Jared, and while reading, he became immediately convinced that it was a revelation of God. He was accordingly baptized by Hiram Smith in Colesville, New York, the next month of February. And he then moved with the Colesville branch when church members gathered to Ohio a few months later. Jared attended the fourth general conference of the church in Kirtland, Ohio in June 1831, where he first heard the prophet Joseph Smith speak, about which he reflected that, notwithstanding he is not naturally talented for a speaker, yet he was filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, so that he spoke as I never heard man speak for God. That fall and early winter of 1831 and 32, Jared preached the gospel in Ohio and in the eastern states of Pennsylvania, New York, and Vermont. After arriving home in Amherst, Ohio after this mission, he wrote, I at length went to Hiram, Ohio to the seer to inquire the will of the Lord concerning my ministry the ensuing season. And he wrote, The word of the Lord came forth. So that's the backstory. Now let's look at the Lord's brief response to Jared's inquiry. He opens by declaring that it is his will that my servant Jared Carter should go again into the eastern countries, from place to place, and from city to city, in the power of the ordination wherewith he has been ordained, proclaiming glad tidings of great joy, even the everlasting gospel. And he promises, I will send upon him the Comforter, which shall teach him the truth and the way whither he shall go. And inasmuch as he is faithful, I will crown him again with sheaves. Then the Lord addresses Jared directly, saying, Wherefore let your heart be glad, my servant Jared Carter, and fear not, saith your Lord, even Jesus Christ. Amen. A little more than one month after section 79 was received on his behalf, Jared Carter obeyed this revelation and began another mission for the Lord which would last for six months, traveling eastward along Lake Erie toward Benson, Vermont, and preaching from place to place and from city to city, as the Lord had instructed. His personal history of this mission testifies that the Lord did send upon him the Comforter to teach him the truth and where he should go. Upon returning home from this mission, Jared recorded the fruits of his labors. I have been gone six months and two days, he said. The Lord has permitted me to administer the gospel to seventy-nine souls, and many others by my instrumentality have been convinced of this most glorious work. Jared viewed his impressive success as growing directly out of the Lord's promises to him in this revelation. He wrote, God has blessed me, according to the prophecy of Brother Joseph, before I went from Ohio. Now let's transition over to section 80, which was received on behalf of Stephen Burnett. Stephen Burnett was only 18 years old when section 80 was received. He joined the church when 16 years old, and was subsequently ordained an elder and a high priest when only 17 years old, making him one of the youngest high priests ever ordained in our church's history. Stephen married Lamira Gardner at age 18 on January 5, 1832, and then, 20 days later, was called in DNC 75 to serve a mission with Ruggles Eames, though it appears that this mission never happened, perhaps having something to do with his companion. So, about six weeks later, the Prophet Joseph received Section 80 on behalf of Stephen in what may have been a mission reassignment. So that's the backstory to Section 80 as far as we have it. Now let's look at the Lord's brief counsel to Stephen in this revelation. He begins by saying, My servant Stephen Burnett, go ye, go ye into the world, and preach the gospel to every creature that cometh under the sound of your voice. And inasmuch as you desire a companion, I will give unto you my servant Eden Smith. Wherefore he continues, Go ye and preach my gospel, whether to the north or to the south, to the east or to the west, it mattereth not, for ye cannot go amiss. Therefore declare the things which ye have heard, and verily believe, and know to be true. Behold, he concludes, this is the will of him who hath called you, your Redeemer, even Jesus Christ. Amen. Two weeks after this revelation was received, Stephen began his mission with Eden Smith's father, John Smith, rather than with Eden himself as the revelation directs, due to Eden being sick at the time and for quite some time thereafter. Eventually, that August, Stephen and Eden finally joined together to preach. According to Eden's journal, 
The two of them served together in eastern Ohio, holding many meetings, but they were not successful in bringing any converts into the church. Now, perhaps it should be noted that Jared Carter and Stephen Burnett both eventually faltered in their faith and found themselves out of the church. In Jared Carter's case, after a few more short missions, he gradually became less faithful. The Spirit of God in a measure has left me, he wrote in his autobiography. And although he continued to fulfill church assignments for several more years and to move with the saints from Ohio to far west Missouri and then again to Nauvoo, Illinois, when the saints left Nauvoo to make their exodus west, Jared left the church and settled in Chicago and then DeKalb County, Illinois, where he eventually died at age 54. As for Stephen Burnett, in 1837 in Kirtland, he became disaffected and joined with apostate Warren Parrish in denouncing Joseph Smith as a fallen prophet and in vilifying those who continue to stand by Joseph as heretics. In the Elder's Journal, published in 1838 and edited by Joseph Smith, it describes Stephen Burnett as having become at this time a little ignorant blockhead whose heart was so set on money that he would at any time sell his soul for fifty dollars. It said that Stephen had got wearied of the restraints of religion and then, in his apostasy, rejoiced in the great victory he had obtained over the great God and all the holy angels, how he had discovered them liars and impostures. So, what are we to learn from D&C 79 and 80? Well, at least one lesson for the thoughtful observer could be this. Given that these sections were received days apart on behalf of two men, who at the time had firm faith in God and His prophet, and a willing eagerness to preach the glad tidings of great joy, which they verily believed and knew to be true, and given that, in the years that followed, this same gospel somehow lost its luster and joy for both men, and that their commitment to God and His prophet dwindled or evaporated, BNC 79 and 80 can serve as sobering and cautionary tales to all those who have ever felt the warm glow of faith and the fire of resolve to share the good news of Christ's gospel, underscoring the vital importance of consistently nurturing our faith, keeping our covenant promises, and enduring faithfully to the end. And that's the story of Doctrine and Covenant 79 and 80. 